and welcome. I'm the Restless Kaiser. And I am Johnny B, but together we are Modeling, Modeling for Advantage. Advantage. Well, mate, a thing of wonder, a thing of beauty. This is it. The German starter force, uh, the tank training company. The latest offering from Flames of War, uh, Super Late War. This Super Late War. This Battle is the for Berlin end. stuff. They have kindly sent us an advanced copy of this. So we are, we, like, the plastic is in my pocket. We have just, just um, I'm this. taking the cellophane yeah, off. Yeah, so we are going to review this for your viewing pleasure. Hopefully, it would be, uh, box, hopefully it would be your pleasure. Yes, so the German starter force mm -hmm. uh, contains three Panthers, late. Three Panthers. Uh, three Panzer Fours, mm. three Hetzers, three Panzer Twos, interesting. Um, mm. Two Tiger Twos, they're beastie. Three Vesps, uh, or Vosps, or whatever they are, Wasps. Vesper. Uh, one Panzer Grenadier Training Platoon. Then you get your rule book, uh, your start here booklet, decals, unit cards. That you get with all of these, yeah. Um, so, yeah. And it's quite a mishmash, isn't it, of vehicular Yeah, yeah. Action. So, the, the kind of thinking behind this, this is like. Um, you know, Battle for Berlin, it's all going downhill, mate. What is the point in holding on to anything? So this is everything. So is this, yeah. So there's a, in the new book, there's a range of formation options that you can take with really wildly different qualities. But this is, this box is for, the stack cards in here for a tank training company. It's literally so, so it's, it's it's a real mishmash. Still it's a real L cobble. On, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And the guys in them, so you're going to get cheap in points for big tanks in this set. So let's crack it up and let's show them what's, what's, what does what's it look like, there? John, when you flip the lid open. Mate, as standard, crammed full of plastic, which Absolutely is always good. Absolutely crammed. I'm yeah! to crush the uh, painted elements. Well, out here, the these table. are ones that I already have. So examples of kits in this box, so we can show you what some of the stuff looks like painted up. All right, we're gonna sort these piles out and we'll be right back. Right then, John, uh, should we cover the little bits of paper and then we'll work our way through the sprues? We can cover the little bit bits of paper. Let's start off with the most awesome thing ever, which is the rule book, which you can't see for two reasons. It's one, in a baggie. One, I put it up too high, <laughs> and two, it's in a baggie, so it's very shiny. But this is awesome, right? If you've got friends that play games but not this, then just give them a copy. Yeah, because you, 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 if you play Flames of One, you're about to start a set, you're going to end up with a lot of these. You're going to end up with a which lot of these. Which is great, right? Those are not quite free, but they're nearly free if you play it a lot, because yes. you end up with enough of these to prop the doors open. And, and you stuff. get one in every start of oh, exactly. God, so exactly. winner. Uh, you get the. I love, I'm starting to like these start here booklets, the guides. Gives you everything you need to know about the construction. Well, I say everything you need to know. Everything you need to know about the vehicles that are listed. Yes. So there'll, sometimes there'll be variants here that it's not giving you instructions for. If we know there are variants, we'll tell you as you go. Yes. If you get on their website, put in the product code, you will find how the different assembly options are. Wonderful. Ooh, that's good to know. Right, uh, that's all of that. That's all of that. And then we get the decals. Decals, which are nice. And this Plenty is, of those. Yeah, this is the G955-1. It's it's numbers and Balkan crosses. Yeah, man. Yeah. Perfecto. But nice, and lots of them. Lots actually. and lots, lots of them. Lots. A lot more than there are tanks, in fact. So get two decal sheets. I'm going to have some of these for Blood Bowl, I think. Mm, right. So unit what, cards. Unit cards. So, um... First thing, we don't normally look at this because we normally know what's kind of on this card. This card is the like headline formations mm. that you can take, but this book is really different to a lot of the others because the, the quality is, is, the is all over the place. Yeah. Um, so what's it telling you? Well, what it's telling you is there's there's some of the there's tank training companies, and then there's a particular battle group, battle group Klauswitz, which has got veterans in it. So you can take a, if you take the Clausewitz Panzer Company, you're going to end up with units with very different capabilities. So mm. if you just take the standard tank company or the training company, yeah, so it's it's, an, it's a really interesting period of the war in that respect. So the formation in this box is a, a Panther tank training company. Okay. But all the tanks in it are not Panthers. What? There, there's some <laughs> Panthers in it and there's some not Panthers in it. So the headquarters is the late Panther. Right. Um, 
And what you've got in here is you've got the, um, it's got the standard Panther stats, or pretty familiar Panther stats. It's confident, it's veteran, and it's careful. It's got the same armor, 10 at the front, five at the side. It's got that cracking gun with a 40 inch range, 14 anti-tank power and three fire power. Uh, tactical move of 10, cross of two. It's a, it's a great vehicle, mm. Panther. Um, and it is 12 points. But it's got the old hand rule. So what they're saying is, because this is a training formation, different. assuming the guy in charge is a veteran. He knows what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Now, at this stage in the while, I think he's probably a veteran with, like, only one arm, though, or something oh, like really? that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because one of the things about... Um, Germany and sort of tra uh, trawling the training schools for troops is they already did that in 1944. That's how they created Panzer Lehr Division as a crack division for Normandy. Mm. They trawled all the training schools and took out all of the capable instructors, all the so fit, healthy veteran instructors went into that division, which was destroyed in Normandy. Yeah, pretty much entirely. So these guys, but they're still pretty good. They're still pretty good. The stats are very good. And this old hand rule, uh, so this is for your headquarters unit. Units from this formation whose unit leader was within six inches um, of this formation can have a tactic skill of four up. And that's really going to matter. So you, because you're still going to have the blitz rule with these guys. Yes. But their skill is mean they're going to keep failing it. If you use their basic, yeah. If you use their that. basic stats. So as long as you keep within range of this guy, oh, man. so that can make a big difference. You know, if you're going to take some some big heavy tanks, this guy wants to tootle around with them. Yep. All right. Um, so you have to take the HQ, which is 12 points. You can put an extra one in for another 12 points or an extra Panther 4 or a Stug or a Hetzer for five points or four points or six points, depending on which of those you pick. And you're going to see this throughout this formation. Lots because they mishmash. They don't have depot I issued equipment. They've got kind of stuff that's been sent back, repaired. It's probably not quite up to spec. Mm. Um, so in this training company, you have to take the HQ. You then have to take one training platoon, which can be Panther, Panzerfort, Stug, or Hetzer. You then have to have another, which can be Panzerfort, Stug, or Hetzer. So you can only have the one Panther company in total. Then you have the option of taking a Panzer II or Panzer III platoon, um, and then the triple 15 millimeter flak training platoon. I think that's the half track one. I think there's a half track with three 15 mil. I'm not sure. Okay. That's a look in that. And then up to two Panzer Grenadier training platoons. So all of these things, with the exception of this card, Going to be relatively low quality. It's a big old list of things you can take. It is, it is, but it doesn't have self-propelled artillery. It doesn't have a lot of the things that you might find integral in a more mainline formation. Mm, true. You have a lot of options for different tanks. Yeah. But that, but the, the list has got a lot of options, but it doesn't have many. It's just tanks. It's just tanks. Yeah. Of varying yeah. degrees. Um, no they don't have so much of that other equipment, or they may be in other training areas or whatever in this particular option. So with this kit, you're going to make that you're going to have that as your HQ and then you're going to take two Panthers so if we compare that the Panther late training platoon so you've got the same gun same armor yeah. all that stuff yeah. Tanks they're the still confident on four plus which I think is the same but rather mean veteran three up skill they're green five up skill oh that's a big <laughs> that's, deal that's quite the difference and they hit on threes they're aggressive I mean, I'd be fearless if I'm rocking around in Panther. <laughs> um, so these are coming out at seven, seven and a half points a model. So a pair of these is only 15 points, whereas this one was 12, 12 just by itself. for one, 15 for two, or 22 for, th for three. So it's interesting. And what the feel I have of this platoon as we look through it mm. is it feels like mid-war Russians. It's like you get some good gear, but the guys in them are morons. Yeah, fresh. <laughs> there's, there's, there's quite a bit of that. Um, so should we talk about the sprue? Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. Um, this seems to be a dual kit, am I correct? Yes. Yes. So it's a couple of the big cats here. It's not just the mm. panther. Yeah. It's an option for the Jag Tiger, which you don't have in... Jag Panther. This, Jag Panther, which you don't have in this... Um, You're not going to have cards for Cards that. for it, but... But we've got the two different upper holes. Yeah. Um, One and, lower hull? Uh, yeah, the lower hull is common. And then, you, yeah, you've got the two guns on this other the sprue tracks, here. Yeah. And the tracks. Um, have what you built, have we got? Have you built one of these, John? I feel like I've built a panther. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. 
I have built a couple. Um, so I've a built a couple recently, and they were okay. The I'm just trying to remember. Keying isn't quite the same on the track piece. Yeah, because it, it it's, it's an earlier oil. one, so the key there is some keying, but it's so the shape at the top of the, the track does slides in, but it doesn't have that solid hard keying that their more modern kits have yeah. where they have kind of the elements sticking out here that plug into the hole so you get it square on. You, you were going to find it hard to put this on the wrong way around or I, in the wrong place. I think place. so, but yes. It, it, I, guess, I guess you were not forced to only put it on one way or have a yes, massive and gap. That's, that's difficult because when you're given that option. Um, yes, yeah, so the difficult part on this kit... The one tricksy bit oh, is the battle yeah. machine gun yes. or the belly machine gun. Um, so what, you, what you've got here, they obviously they're not able to mold it into the upper hole. Um, so you have this on here. They weren't you've got the point. kind of the ball mounting that it's in, the gun sticking out. Now it is on here, there's one on here and it has very, very thin sprue gates. So as long as you're careful. Could I get a picture of that? Uh, yeah, so the one on there is different, John. Is it? Yeah. The one on there is quite hard. So the one on the track sprue yep. is, an, is a kind of an older version of yeah, it. Yeah, 2012. And you see the sprue gates on there are a little bit strong. And that that is tough to get out. You know, you want a nice new sharp blade. Yep. You definitely can get them out, I've done it. Um, but Opposed to? There's another one on the whole sprue which has got much, much smaller sprue oh, gates. Wow. That's a lot easier to get out. And um, other interesting feature on here is you'll see just next to the battle machine gun, you've actually got the infrared bits. If you want to do, there is a specialist formation in this book that allows you to take that, that experimental unit that the Germans had that were messing around with infrared. These weird little gobbins. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and you want to get on their website if you want to see how that goes. But uh, I've built quite a few of these. Uh, over the years, it is a nice. It is a nice kit. It makes a nice model. There's tools sculpted on the hull, which you really need in 15 mil. And mm. um, the gun lock again. There's a lot of detail molded onto the hull, and um, you don't get as much variety that way. But if they were separate, they'd be tiny, tiny pieces. Yeah, these, are, these are war gaming pieces, man. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and and like like so many of their kits, you're gonna as we look at these. They're wargaming kits. They're twenty-piece tanks, not a hundred-piece tanks, and they're quite robust. So yeah, uh, three of them. They paint up quite nicely, uh, and they're a good size. They feel like a they feel like a big tank. They look scary when you compare yeah. them to the others. I and mean, just because we mentioned it, you can build. I, I I think you have everything you need to build a yag uh, a yag panther here. I think so, right? I mean, the only I th difference I th is the. I think so. Has it got the? Yeah, it's definitely got the gun mount on this other piece. Um, that, sorry, the gun on, on, on the track sprue, and the mount is this bit here, this sort of square. Yeah, squarish yeah, thing yeah, yeah. So you it can, if you that. really, really want to. If you've already got a load of Panthers, you can make those. And if you want details of how to build them, get on their website and look it up. Because they make two Panther kits. This is their later one. Mm. The earlier one for sort of Normandy period, I think, is the D. And it's got the Zimmerit paste. It's right. got it's got a textured hull, and you'll actually see on this where you've got that extra bow machine gun. One of them, has one of them sculpted with zimmerit on. Yeah, but you think you might have three to make mistakes with. It's got a textured face. It's painted. You're gonna hardly tell the difference. I have um, a textured face. You have a textured face. Um, what's next? What's next then, John? Well, what what are you what are you fancy? What you got? What's the next card? The next card, well, the next card is the Vesper, actually, then, John, if you want to say that. So this is not integral. Vesper is self-propelled artillery. It's built on a Panzer II chassis. It's surprisingly Indeed. late war this stuff gets introduced. I mean, it's not 1945 late war, but a lot of stuff like this and, like, the self-propelled flak and so forth on tank holes, we've got examples of that very early in the war. The Germans, it's much, much later. I think this is... is that, why is that? Down to doctrine or...? Availability of holes, oh, I really? think. Because they, because they make a lot of shtugs out of their old holes, yes. whereas we don't really go in for the whole tank destroyer thing in the same way. Mm. So we have a lot more capacity to make to put them to other purposes, like engineering vehicles and so... But Germans, do, they do have examples of this, but you would expect something like this to be... A, Quite an early war thing on a Panzer II chassis. Yeah. Um, and it's not. It's the 10.5 centimeter. So, what you're basically doing is you're getting the option to swap out the, if you, you know, rather than having um, crude towed guns, this is the self propelled one. 
This is brand new in this kit. So brand new. Brand new. Look at that. Have we got, got 2022 BM 293 rather. I'm guessing that's it. This is it, yeah. It's beautiful, beautiful new sprue. It's the newest thing in this box. It's not been released separately. I also notice there's two upper holes here, John. Hmm. What's that all about? What's the other You option? can also build a Mara 2 with this. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, and they are available a bit earlier. Precisely when I'm not sure. They're both built on a Panzer II hull. They're quite different. I don't think you're going to be able to easily interchange these. Oh, yeah. But if you look at this sprue, so if this is their newest sprue, what does this say about like Battlefront? Where where they you know where they're going as a company? I say there's a couple of things that I really I really like about this. One is the sprue gates are really thin. Oh yeah, this so is you, the chances years of yeah, design. They, yeah, absolutely, really thin. None of the pieces are too thin. Where the pieces are very small. So again, you've got some sculpted tools on the sides of the plates. The piece count is, the parts count is low. Bearing in mind, this is two variants. Um, but the other is, um, and this is a small thing, but I'm, I'm glad to see that they've done it, is they've put the sprue gates on the outside of the track. So you can get to it. So you can get to it a little bit easier. Yeah, yeah. And again, they've got that king, so three slots on one side, two on the other. We haven't had a chance to build one of these yet. We're actually going to do a separate video uh, where we're going to where we're going to build the Marder, the Vespa, and the Panzer II, and we're going to talk about them, like the experience of having built them. I love the little uh, Panzers, which you'll be able to see soon. And they're little Panzers. Yeah, they're cute. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you get three of them in there. And yes. What, what do they come in at? Uh, so they're nine points for the three, or eighteen points for if you want the six gun battery. Um, so that's very nice. You don't get a card for the Marder. And you're not going to get build instructions, but they're, they're, they're days away. Yeah. Right. So next up. Options. Is um, should we go to the... Oh, no, you've already got it. Sorry. Next up, you mean, is the, the card. Two. Boom. The, the big, king tiger. Big the boy. royal tiger. So, uh, again. That's that massive. That's that massive. Beast and you've got a pair of them in here. Oosh. Just look at the size of this beast. You've I mean, built one, haven't you? Yeah. I've, got, I've got one already. Yep, yeah, this is one uh, I'd built previously. I was going to put it sort of alongside the Panzer IV <laughs> so you can see how much bigger a vehicle it is. I mean, the turret on the... Is nearly as big, is as, the nearly tank, as, big so. as the Panzer IV itself. Um, and the, the stats are going to tell you that. So the gun on this has got a 48-inch range and still got a halted rate of fire of 2 and moving to 1. 17 anti-tank power, 3 up firepower, 16 front armour. I mean, that is excessive. Still 8 on the side, but, you know, that's not amazing, though. Um, and 2 on the top, but it's aggressive. Hit on 3s because it's part of this training platoon, and it's green. So this is exactly the unit you want to keep right next to your commander. Wow. Um, and you get a pair of these for 27 points. <laughs> Because I'd, of I the would love quality. to know the points of a, like, a veteran uh, King 2. Uh, we could dig out the card pack from the old one, but it's probably double that. Do you know what I mean? It's just yeah. like yeah, crazy yeah, yeah. numbers. For, for the, because they normally you the get two. a veteran crew. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it, a beast. It, is a, it is a monster of a vehicle. Now, normally, I shy away from the big tanks in, in games because they tend to... points for power. Well, they're just so... But the... Although the numbers are great, it's still, even if you it's keep still, still, it gets out two shots. shots. Yeah. Yeah. One yeah, of those is going to miss. That. Yeah. It's only got a three up firepower. Even if you, even if everything works, a third of them fail, at least a third fail to hit, you know? So in the game terms, how is it going to make back its money? I, is this a bullet magnet against the rookie player? But against the pro player, I'm so not sure they're going to fire him from. No, no. Yeah, Especially the armor of it. Ignore it. But at this kind of points value, you can afford to take two or even three of them if you maybe got one from World of Tanks. Three of them is 41 points. You still got more than half your army. Mm. You know, you can still get a tank platoon, some infantry, some artillery, and so forth on top of this. Um, and it, unlike all the other vehicles, doesn't care about being hit on threes. No. Because <laughs> you won't hit penetrate me, it. Hit me, yeah. By all yeah, means. Yeah. But if you take these big tanks and stick them at the back of the board, you're going to be disappointed. Yeah, it won't die, but it just isn't going to kill that much. No. 
No, just not enough output. It's just not, not, enough, not enough output. In my oh, experience, because I'm trying it. it with Russians. Oh, yeah, when you get swarmed by cheap tanks. Yeah. But again, it's a lovely kit. Did we show them the sprue? We've not had a look at the sprue yet. Yeah. Uh, Tiger 2, this the was size released of the pieces. in 2021. Yeah, this is, still new. this is a ve also a very new kit. Um, so you've got that uh, You've got that keying, you've got the lovely thin sprue gates, you've got the low parts count, two-piece turret. When did we start seeing these on the battlefield in the real world? Um, definitely in the bulge. Like if you've watched a black, black and white footage of a huge battalion of them um, kind of arrayed ready to go into battle, that's stuff that's preparing to go into the Battle of the Bulge. Right. They'd, they'd been massing them. Whether they were using them in the East before, it is a late, a it is a late 44 did, yeah. tank. A lot of tanks. Um, whether I saw action before that, I don't know. But definitely the big thing about the Battle of the Bulge is, it, is the Tiger this Tank is battalions are these. Yeah. That would have been terrifying. Um, oh my god! Because these these don't just sort of replace Tiger in terms ordinary Tiger in terms of them being better. Is they stop producing Tiger and start producing this? Right. It has replaced the production, Completely, yeah. which is why there's only thousand odd Tigers or something. Is they don't keep producing them till the end of the war, but a lot of them last. Yeah, they're, they're still, right. There's still the Tiger end. ones kicking around mm. in late forty four, early forty five. But they are not, they stopped producing new ones because they pushed it into this. Because the role that they had in mind for Tiger as a breakthrough tank mm. just wasn't powerful enough against the kind of anti tank guns. 17 pounders are start, you're starting to get in. Yeah. Port, you know, towed 17 pounders. The Russians got SU 100s, you know, they've got, they've got big SU 122s, big anti tank guns on chassis. So Tiger, very good vehicle for 43. But by mid 44. You can't just say nothing can hurt me anymore. Yeah. yeah. So they start building this and say, well, try it on this side. So, yeah, then. nothing can hurt this. Um, <laughs> so th there are reasonable numbers for very late war German tanks. Yes. Yeah. yeah. For very late war German tanks. Um, yeah, stats definitely with this formation would want to try it. Boom. Okay, mate. So we've seen a few of the kits now. Yeah. But what the hell is going on? Why is the, like, their backs are against the wall. Mm. Tell me a bit about the battle for Berlin. What's going on? This whole retreat. So, the war in the East is a 1941 Barbarossa, the Germans push door, right they, out. they get a thousand miles into Russia or something. Great swathes of territory, advancing on all fronts. 1942, that Offensive has been dropped to one third its size. Mm. They're just attacking in Army Group South, which is going to the Caucasus for the for the oil in the deep oh. south of Russia, modern day sort of Georgia, Azerbaijan, places Resource like that. Resource rush. Um, and Stalingrad. And they've got one army group advancing on two axes. There's a lot to complain about with yeah, with sounds... with that. Um, well, I've got my own, I've got my own views on that. I've got my own views on that. If I was playing a board game, I might be doing the same. But anyway, 1942, that offensive has dropped to a third the size. But still, it, it looks like it's going to be very successful. Ends with the disaster at Stalingrad, the mm. German surrender. I think it's February 43. The German summer offensive in 1943 is not even one army group. It's one battle. That's the Battle of Kursk, which you've probably heard about. The Germans attack with two Panzer armies, trying to do cut off a salient. Yeah. Doesn't go so well. So the Germans then fall back. Operations is though. They're really nervous about it, actually. Hitler, they're like, this this might not be such a this good idea. Good. We can't afford to lose this battle. Mm. Not only can we not win it. And then, of course, you the Allies invade in Italy. You know, so there's suddenly massive strategic pressure on Germany at this point. It's a lot of fronts. The Italians up. fall out of the war. Huh? So they're like, oh crap, that's a big open door in the bottom end. Nice got soft underbelly, sir. Yeah, unfortunately it was terribly mountainous and not all that soft. It was pretty <laughs> tough. It turned out, the soft old boot of Italy turned out to be. But nonetheless, so there's the... Uh, 43, the, the Soviets start to gain ascendancy in the East. But it's tough going. They don't make a huge amount of progress in 43. In Operation Bagration in '44, they make massive progress. They kick the Russian, they kick the Germans out of Russia. 
you know, similar kind of speed to Barbarossa had been, oh, but in wow. the other direction. So when you hit, by the time you hit 1945, Germany is losing territory, German territory, industrial facilities. Mm. Um, but it's falling back on its own supply lines. The, the Russian supply lines are incredibly extended Stretched at this point. The They're having the problems that the, the Germans are on their scorched earth policy. Hitler is determined, like, if the German people are not good enough, then they do not deserve to exist after this. Leave nothing behind. Wow. He's not interested in evacuating people. He's not interested in saving infrastructure. Not only because he wants to rob the Russians of it, because of that kind of, he's a mad ideologue, right? It's like, there is no Germany without Nazism. Holy moly. It has no future. So nobody's escaping there. Nobody's escaping. That's why that whole fight to the death this so he, he's, he institutes this policy the kind of the festung fortress city mm. and it says like okay points place on the map says here is where we will stand and you will you will fight to the last round you will take out the last russian with your bare hands kind of thing so and it cool. happens again and again and again and again and then they just lose they're just hemorrhaging manpower and material doing this and um, it had worked at some points earlier though you can see why he thought and, it, and that kind of worked for the Russians, you know. Oh, the Russians, once they got some stomach with the not one step back, uh, there is no land for us beyond the Volga, it was making the Russians stand instead of their officers falling back. That worked. But at times it worked, times it didn't work. Mm. By 1944, is a, a disaster. All is lost. So the, in, the, in, in the spring of 1945, they've crossed... Or are crossing the Oder, which is a river, I don't know, 30 miles east of Berlin, something like that. Like the last obstacle before the city itself. That's what this kind of book is really about, that campaign. It's about 1945. This is like the last dregs of Germany's absolutely, death Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and the Germans have made a really, a really critical tactical blunder. They have spunked away their best effort on the Battle of the Bulge. Oh. December 44... They hoarded all their reserves, all of their best material, all of these magnificent King Tiger battalions. Gone. Gone. Most of it gone. Lost in the Battle of the Bulge. Hence why we've got an eclectic So you, mix of... what you've got left in this, yeah, yeah. So the, Germ the Germans know this is coming. The Russians are not... For a big part of 44, they feel they're not in a rush because they worry if they overextend themselves, the Germans are still dangerous. Mm. they'll sting him and what you'd had with uh, Manstein's backhand blow uh, earlier I think that's 43 they had grossly overextended themselves and then had lost oh. basically an army group ouch to a, to a counter stroke and they, they remained like we need to not let this happen again yeah you know because this th this I don't, I don't think anybody thinks that they can lose at this point but they're nervous still and you can minimise loss of life, can't yeah. you? But not make so they, it blunt. So they, so they make sure they're properly prepared for what they're doing. So there's been huge preparations for this assault on the Sea Heights. And the Germans have built three lines of static fortifications oh. outside Berlin on this on this big hill. There's actually... The Sea Heights is the bit that gets the attention. Mm. But it's actually a much bigger operation than yeah. this. And involving whole Russian fronts, which are army groups. The Germans know the amount of artillery the Soviets have. So they have actually abandoned the front line of fortifications. They've built them, but they don't occupy them. And they occupy them in a very kind of skeleton crew kind of way. Because okay. they know everyone in there is going to die in, they, in the barrage actually, in the yeah. first wave. So they have this brutal fight outside, which again uses up a lot of manpower, materiel, like reserves. Point. So when they finally get to Berlin, and the, Rus the Soviets have been raced. Stalin is like racing two of his front commanders. Really? Eisenhower says he's not going to race to Berlin. He's not going to rush. We've already agreed that Berlin is going to be in the Soviet sector after the war. So he phones Stalin up and he's like, you know, do you know what I need you to know? I'm not rushing to Berlin. You can take your time. You can do it right. And Stalin's like, yeah, mate, same. 
yeah. and puts the phone down. It's a bluff. Don't believe that, dickhead. Go, go, go. Yeah. Exactly. Go, go, go. So once they're in the, the supply situation, is right. He then takes his two major front commanders, which is, um, God, I can never remember the other guy. It's Zhukov and it is another one. The other guy. <laughs> the other guy. The other big guy. The other guy. And he, he kind of pits them against each other and he draws a line on a map. Says, you can't go beyond this point and you can't go beyond this point. First person to Berlin gets a new badge. All right. Gets a and, new what? A new badge. Like, you know, it's more braid or whatever it is. Whatever it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. You get Always. the accolade get, of having yeah. captured the... the heart of the beast. Wow. And uh, so the, and they actually, although Zhukov is this infamous Soviet commander, the most successful guy that they've got, um, you know, a, a victor of many, many major campaigns. He doesn't actually do all that well at the beginning. And in the end, Stalin lets him off. He moves this line just a little bit. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean that. I meant... <laughs> yeah, yeah. There. But it was kind of... And it probably was his intention all along. Right. But Stalin is not the kind of guy who wants rivals either. And nobody wants to be Stalin's rival. Uh, so Zhukov wasn't entirely convinced that Stalin had his back because Zhukov is probably as famous as Stalin mm. and probably as celebrated and Zhukov needs to do a good job of you know doffing his cap around the big man otherwise once the war is won do I need you anymore yeah. you know oh wow um politics so then they when they do start breaking into Berlin now the German garrison in Berlin the guy it's not Steiner. It's something very similar to that. Jim, I really should have looked this up before we did the video, shouldn't I? No, because then he's, they can interact. And then they can interact and tell us what I got wrong. And so he's a he's a absolutely uh, horrendous Nazi character. He starts his briefings every morning by asking his commander, "Is how many people did you hang today?" What? Because desertion is a big problem. Well, so yeah. the streets of Berlin before the Russians even get there, there's there's soldiers. And Hitler Youth and people are just hanging from oh. lampposts all over the place. Very public hangings. You know, he, he's going around and stuff like not having a tunic done up, saying, hang this man. You know, because it, he, I suppose on a kind of brutal level, he recognises that without iron discipline... They need to fear th me th more we than should, they fear the Russians. Yeah, because we should be giving up now. Yes. We've clearly lost and I'm going to give my life pointlessly. So they need to know that their life is going to be taken from them <laughs> if they don't. So um, so the situation in Berlin is incredibly desperate. It's, it's, it's incredibly desperate. grim. And it, it, and it, and, and it descends in this, to this block by block by block fighting. A lot of people would have seen the movie Downfall. It's been atrociously heavily memed. Yeah. Known about the last days in the Führer bunker. But they can quickly, they can measure the rate of advance of the Soviets. They're making so many hundred yards a day literally fighting house to house and so forth but the problem with all this festung stuff that they've, that, that they've been doing they've been having these city fights again and again is the soviets have got a doctrine for it now they've got a pamphlet they've got they've got a, how do you fight a block war and what you do is the, the the system i don't remember the exact details of but it's something like you know you go up in, in in your squad everybody takes a different window fires five shots into it and then breaks in the door because all got the PPSHs. they're actually much better equipped for city fighting through experience uh, through uh, through experience but because they've got smgs not rifles oh yeah true you know yep. yeah and the mg is great down the street but between the buildings house to house fighting 96 round drum on a ppsh is a great weapon for that. yeah yeah um and the germans never produce mp40s in those kind of numbers or it's various or, or it's variants well, so you have you have these these, you know, right down to the kind of micro level of a handful of a tank on a street trying to break down a, 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 a you know, a HE, um, some kind of infantry gun or something like that. It's like, we need to knock that out before we can move on to the next bit and micro so forth. Micro scale, uh, scale battles. Yeah, yeah. And, and Berlin is a, is a slag heap. It's been bombed a lot by us you know and there's actually some competition among among the kind of senior commanders on both sides like which side of berlin is more damaged the west side that we bombed or the east side that the russians shelled you know what which did the which did the most damage mm. but either way that that kind of ruined landscape 
with people fighting in cellars room to room and stuff it's it's a dirty war yeah and that's not good it's a dirty war and the game's up really completely but they're still right to the right to the very end either the morning or the day before he commits suicide i think it's the morning there's film footage hitler goes out and pins medals on hitler youth and and that's when you see when he kind of see this is one of these like he's really shaky really frail i think it's the same morning i think it's one of the first things he does but you can you can see that footage it's commonly used in documentaries wow. it's kind of illustration of how much his nerves had obviously gone, gone sure. in addition to all the drugs he was taking every day and so forth but he's in a terrible terrible state and i think that's 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 the one that's like you, you're doing this and why? you're sending these yeah, guys back you out this? and you're going to put a bullet in your own head this afternoon because oh. the Russians are going to be here because he doesn't believe in a Germany after Without, Nazism because yeah. of that, all that kind of eugenics type stuff the master race must prevail they obviously didn't have the fibre if you can lose to the Soviet untermensch then obviously then you're not worth it that's grim. But there you go. Incredibly We've set grim. the scene for you. And set that's where this is. Sorry about the waffle place. there, guys. Um, okay, let's have a look at some more kits. Nice. Boom. Next card, sir. Next one I got here is the ubiquitous Panzer IV. Uh, this one. Yep. Um, one of a very small number of tanks that seems to see service throughout the entire war. The whole thing. Now, there's a lot of variants. It goes from A through to. I want to say H, but I might it might even go further than that. Wow! Um, started the war as a support tank with a howitzer, with Boom. a short barrel seventy five. It then becomes the main battle tank forty two into forty three. Panther is supposed to replace it's a replacement, it. Replacement, yeah. Panther is supposed to replace it, but even at the beginning of forty five, they haven't produced enough Panthers. And they're still producing these late variants. The last version, I think it's the H, is fundamentally the same vehicle as the G, but they've stripped out some of the high tech stuff. Oh, really? They've made it cheaper. Just to get more. Because it's now, it's now the budget tank. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So and it doesn't, the kind of the electrics and the, the, and the hydraulics and, and maybe some of the optics thing that I just like, can we make this a bit cheaper? Yeah. Or more importantly, can we make it a lot cheaper with a small loss of performance is the thinking. Um, I, I love the late Panzer IV. I, I love the shape of it and the, so with iconic, the skirts. It's really, always really iconic. Yeah. And these... Are your training platoon ones so again these are aggressive they're green oh. and they're they're oh. confident but they do have three up motivation because they've got protected ammo okay so that they, you so know yeah, they've got okay. safe stored ammo mm. uh so it's seven ten and thirteen points for three uh two three and four of these and there's three in the box uh yes i'm yeah. just gonna say yes until i look yeah. proper. so you're paying about three points of vehicle yeah, at this point three. and the reason for that is because the gun if you're fighting historical Western allies, mm. what are we rolling out? Cromwells and Shermans. This fan, this anti tank power of eleven it's more is than still adequate. Not, yeah, I wouldn't say it was more than adequate. Oh, okay, it's, it's not adequate. One, it's not one not hit, one than. kill, which it, is what you want with a tank. Right, if yeah, it hits, it, 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 yeah, when you design a tank, what all it needs to do if it got to kill other tanks, if it hits, it needs to go through. Yeah, this fifty fifty. Oh, really? will, it, will it go through? You got at least seven armor on on, on Sherman at this point. At this point, mm. yeah, yeah. Similar to this, it's got six front armor, um, and so against T thirty four, it can it can compete with T thirty four. But the T thirty four's got an eighty five mil gun by this point. So if it gets the jump on you, <laughs> yeah. But unlike the Western Allies, the Soviets have got much heavier tanks. They found that they have a lot more use for them. Mm. And the thing there, the thing in it, I don't think it's that like in Britain we never lost sight of the need for a breakthrough tank or a heavy tank, so that we still had Churchill. Yeah. But it's all about lift capacity. It's all about transport, about fuel efficiency and space efficiency on a Liberty ship. These things have come from Detroit. You know, so how much more performance do you get? How many vehicles can you fit on a ship? How much fuel does it take to move them once they're there? Is such an important consideration. That's a driving factor. And the Americans decide that that's the, that we're going to make that number one. We're going to make the logistics of this war being the primary driver in deciding what tanks we're going to make and so forth. 
they do make Pershing. It does start to appear in this period, but yeah. in relatively small numbers. Mm. But yeah, the Russians, their final land war. And yeah, then roll them out. Yeah. Yeah. So they so they have a they're a lot more a stronger position to make heavier tanks. And they Much can fuel them ones. with potato water and vodka. <laughs> and, and, and unfortunately not. Uh, but we are taking millions of gallons of fuel oil, as, among other things, to Russia. And they do have this kind of Georgian oil fields, which is they the biggest oil producer in Europe. Right the yeah. Yeah. yeah, They still have oil problems, but not like running out. More like it's we like have to we stop operations for a month. <laughs> oh, okay. until we, yeah, until we get some more <laughs> out of the hole that we've been digging for oil. Uh, Panzer, Panzer kit, IV. So it's an older kit. It is one of the older kits, right? Uh, 2013. Yeah. Still holds up. Yeah. I don't I, think it's it, a bad it, design. It, no, it absolutely holds up. Um, this, the gun on this. One option, I'm seeing. Yeah. So the one, the one, the, yeah, you've just got the long 75. The one, th there's a couple of funny bits on this because it's an older kit. I think mm. they would, they would probably make it different now. So uh, you're, again, your bow machine gun is, is quite small. What I found with this, and you found similar with the Panther, is cut off the e the, the end by the barrel first, so and there's then no pressure. It's all yeah, about the pressure. It's all about the pressure. The it's just it's such a small piece, uh, is the thing. Uh, but then you've got this kind of I don't know whether that's part of the exhaust or something like that. There's a little bit of the engine that sticks out the back. Oh, this like canister. <laughs> yeah, there's like a canister that comes out. Yeah, the back. I think that is. I'm on sure the back, there's right. professional people. Yes, that of go, course. Like, how do you not know yeah, what that look, is? You on moron. The back. There it is. Yeah, yeah, it's on the back. Yeah, I glued it on. But and hopefully it's it in the right is. place. And that is keyed. There's two like little lugs that fit in ah, yes. to the to the to the back of that. Let's go. And then the actual gun itself on the mounting, and you see there's this extra small mountain. piece over here which has got the machine gun on. Ooh. Yeah? Yeah. It's got an integral, the coaxial machine gun. Is that a Zimri on there as well? And this, yeah, because this is the this is the late war one. There is an amount of a Zimri on the front of the hull of this tank. They make a, an early war Panzer IV as well. Yeah, a mid war Panzer IV, sorry, um, which is which is Sheen. And then you have the option for there's two slightly different patterns of skirts. One of them is a bit dinged up. Well, yeah, one is a bit like a little slap bit. these together. Um, is that difficult? To put together, because I'm noticing this is, I'm looking at the model and looking at the sprue there, there's this little sort of uh, shirts and uh, thing here. What yeah, is that? now is I that, don't is know. That tricky? No, you don't need that. So you don't need it. You I, just slap it I down. think that is for interaction with an older kit. Oh, oh, okay. I could be wrong. Is it molded onto the. Yes, it is. Yeah, so something similar to that is it's actually on the shirts, but you can it's see the on. sections. On yeah. there, yes, it's that. Yes. Okay. So I don't know whether they whether they made it or make oh, other that on there. other patterns. So in their earlier stuff, they were transitioning that a lot of metal, metal and a lot of resin and mm. a lot of other specialist kits and some of the early plastics. We saw it with the Panther. There's bits on the Panther track sprue, which are redundant. Oh. Because I think the Panther track sprue is older okay. than the Panther sprue. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah? yes. So because you're going back, that's one of their very, very early kits, and this, this one's one quite early. Yeah, yeah, 2013. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Still very serviceable. Paints up very nicely. You want a whole bunch of these. My plan next time I make some of these though, is I'm going to get a pair of pliers and I'm going to start cutting up the, the skirts. Because when you, you see the smash them up, when you see the footage, it, it's not armor. It's just it's just a bit of steel sheeting because it's to stop shape charges. Shape charge. Yeah, yeah. It was originally to stop anti tank rifles and to make the bullet tumble, <laughs> but shape charges they're really effective against as well. Yeah, it's just a sheet of steel to make the warhead detonate outside the armor. But as they're moving through, especially in Normandy, these things they just get it's ripped off. Catch, yeah, they ca yeah, they catch on a bit of hedge rolls and, yeah. and 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 they're, and they're like huge tears in them. Um, wow! So I, yeah. I think I think I'm going to do that. You know, just sort of cut into it with the clippers and fold Bent it. Bent edges and yeah, stuff and like so that, where it's just caught on the. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's a lovely kit, regardless, and a, a yeah. true workhorse of the German army. Again. Yeah, yeah, um, and and you definitely will be finding these all over the place. You can oh, use this from 1943 yeah. right to the end all of the, the war. Way. You can't have too many of them. Next, next, 
Hetzer. Hetzer. So the Hetzer is wow. another this year's cute little tank. Or, or late last year, was it? Um, it's pretty new. I'm going to say 21, right? Um, yes. 2020, okay. So this, the Hetzer, is, so that's during COVID. It is. So I don't think we saw it in 20. We might have done. It feels newer than that. Late. We saw it late. Yeah? Yeah. All right. We'll so the Hetzer tank training platoon, uh, what you've got in here again, they're confident because it's a self-propelled gun, tank destroyer, whatever language you choose to use. It's got the counter attack rate is worse. It's on a five. Mm. It's green oh. and its assault rating again is worse because it's a it, because it's a self-propelled gun on a six, and it's hit on threes because it's aggressive. So this thing, again, quite easy to knock out. It's got seven front armor though. Bear in mind, Panzer IV had six. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it's got the same gun. It's got that 32 inch range. It might be slightly worse. The Panzer IV, what was the range? No, it's the same gun. Same range. It's the same, same gun. gun. So it's anti tank power of 11, fire power of 3 up, forward firing. It is overworked though. Now I'm trying to remember if you, I, I don't have one. I play World of Tanks with the kids at school. Mm. Uh, and, and they've got the Hetzers at the moment. I take different tanks in each week. I do have some. <laughs> Mix it up a bit. Yeah, so they're not playing the same yeah, game every yeah, week. For sure. Um, and take the cards in and so forth. But if they've got too much choice, they never get started. I mean, it, look, it looks tight. I'm not surprised it's so It is work. very it small. Is really angled as well. So this is built on... So I just, should just finish with the stats, shouldn't I? Oh. So this is 6, 8, and 11 points for 2, 3, or 4. You get 3 in here, so only 8 points. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Um, it does have the overwork rule, which means the moving to hit number goes up by 1. Yeah, it's still, it what's can it still on? fire. What's it hitting on? It, it depends it, on what it's shooting depends at. depends on what it's shooting at. So halted, it's fine. Moving, you go down to the one shot rather than two, and the target number mm. goes up by one. Uh, because it is an ambush vehicle. Yeah, ultimately. It's really cute, it's really small. So these are built on the Czech Pans uh, 38T yes. chassis. It's not quite the same, I think it's stretched or something like that a little bit. Um, but it's got pretty thick armour. For a vehicle of its size and a very severe slope uh, and it's, it's quite very drastic, small and that's reducing and they've got a 75 mil gun in it and what that means is there is no room inside yeah there is all there is very little room i can inside. imagine a lot of crook necks and yeah shoulders absolutely and that and that's one of the things about why slope timer took a while to take off is uh, people always knew slope timer was better they could do the maths on it you just can't but when we fit the it. people, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. But I think as more and more vehicles have been built, they'd learn a lot more about ergonomics. They just more efficiently lay out the stuff inside. Um, the Soviets are just earlier out the gate than everybody else mm. on that with the slope timer and the T-34. So this was the vehicle that they felt was going to replace Stug and, and uh, Jagdpanzers and all kinds of things because okay. it was cheap, it had the good gun in it, it was easy to produce. They were expecting to build thousands, tens of thousands even of these if the war had run on. Truth of the matter is it didn't. I think it comes out 44. But you do get a lot of these. And I think the gun, one of the problems, these compromises you have to make to fit a gun that size and a chassis that small. Yes. Is I think the gunner has, the loader has to reach over the gun. He can't stand on the right side, on, on the left, whichever side it is, it's reloaded from. Because the gun is an existing gun that's been put in it. Oh. So the, the gunner is standing, the, the loader is standing here, uh, but the shell has to go in there. Um. So he kind of has to reach over awkwardly <sighs> to get it in. Yeah, yeah, no thanks, you're right. Yeah. I'll, but all I'll, the other, have, big, all the rest of the apparatus of the gun, they can't be upside down for yeah, the gunner, true, yeah? True, um, So that's part. I don't think it has less men, but it's a very awkward thing to load. I think that that's, that's it's some of the thinking. It's not what you really need when, yeah. you know, the primary function is to shoot the damn gun. Um, you tend, uh, you, you'll often see these in that kind of three-coloured stripe um, camouflage, but there's quite a few pictures, black and white pictures of these in that spotty if you like the ambush camouflage yeah the, you, there are plenty of the units that did it in that as well okay um but what you're getting in this late period of the was some of these were probably just painted gray or yellow yeah, in, these, in these because these are training battalions and one of the things that we do know is they had to change the primer color on the german tanks at the end of the war just running out of everything because they're running they out point. of the paint pigment yeah yeah because it's made out of iron oxide or something the the 
Rock brawn in, in or whatever. Or you it, left. It, yeah, yeah, well, I'll, certainly the, the chemical factories have been overrun and all yeah. that kind of stuff. <laughs> so they, they, they just, yeah, you get all kinds of crazy paint crazy schemes. Crazy colours. Uh, just quickly before uh, we move on. Yeah. This also has got component pieces for... Yes, this also makes another Marder. I think this is the Marder, Marder, 3. Marder 3 that this makes, which again, um, and I'm not sure, yeah, the, there's three guns on here. Yeah, with... I, I think that there's something on here that they haven't yet told us about, which might be a science fiction tank. What, this? Like a this version thing. of it. Or maybe this is a flamethrower or something. I'm not I'm not sure because there's three guns on here. This bit here that says laser cannon. <laughs> <laughs> In no, fact, there are four mean. guns on here. I've got a big gun that looks like it's for the Marder predominantly. That's definitely the one that sticks out the front of the hits her. Or yeah. is it just like a howitzer version? It's got the same mounting point on the yeah. back. Did they do a howitzer version? I don't it's know. A I don't I think don't so. I haven't seen stats for There's one, three but they may, they may have made one. Cool. Because we also know what's coming with Flames of War. Is they're going to do the kind of science fiction 1945. Yes. I don't mean lasers and aliens, <laughs> but the things things like things Mouse. might have, yeah. Like, Pete Sminovich has definitely talked about Mouse, but I think there's more than that. There's things that they were prototypes of, things they were drawings of, maybe things that they were drawings of on a napkin, you know? Yeah. It's good um, enough. We can make a model out of that. We, yeah, absolutely. And people like that in their yeah, games. Yeah, they do. The and you're playing ifs. a what-if situation. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. Okay, next. So the last tank in here is the, the thing that caught me completely off guard. Definitely wasn't expecting this. Really? No. Why is what that? What is it, John? It is the beautiful uh, Panzer II. The Panzer II. Fresh out of the plastic press. Plastic Panzer II. There's absolutely zero Panzer IIs in the tables of organisation in 1944 and 1945. Oh. You look at a German order of battle, it doesn't include these. Oh. This thing should never have gone to war. <laughs> Whatever. No, like literally in the German, <laughs> the, the German pre-war um, Panzer plan, one and two are, are trials. Just proof of concept sort of job. Absolutely, yeah. It's a Panzer II isn't... It is a light tank by weight. Yes. But it's not fast. Oh. It's not It's not a fast <laughs> tank. Oh. It's a tank that they make to learn how to mass produce tanks. Because they have no armament industry after the First World they War. They do not. Yeah. So there's not vast numbers of Panzer I. Panzer II is about, is mostly about like industry, like, it, okay, if we need to make not one tank, not 20 tanks, we but need, thousands, yeah, yeah. we need to do up? big production runs of this. Um, so, because th this thing's got a 20 mil cannon or two centimeter cannon and a machine gun in a bitty little turret. It's, it's a tiny vehicle, um, which we'll talk about stats in a mm. minute. But Panzer III is intended to be the principal tank. Yeah. Panzer IV is a support medium tank. Yes. Yeah. Arguably, Panzer III is even a light tank. It's is that it the line of that. Yeah, the early ones. And the early ones have got lots of machine guns. What, the threes? Yeah, the early ones have got ex an extra machine gun. They got a lot of machine guns. Well, that was um, the thing, wasn't it? Early war. It's yeah, 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 everywhere yeah. with machine guns sticking out. Yeah, all, all that kind of. The, the later ones don't. No. In fact, you'll commonly see kind of in our German machine gun, German tanks having three machine guns: a battle machine gun, a coaxial machine gun, and one on a cupola mount. Mm. But they were generally issued with two. Not the cupola. No, no, not not the one the cop the one in the coupler is the is the coax one been taken out and put oh, right. into an anti aircraft yeah. mount. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's the it's like it's you the can same have it here gun. or you can have it there. Yeah. Now, as other vehicles get destroyed, they're in action. A lot of them do have three. You know, maybe some of the SS ones have three, but generally that they don't have that third yeah. machine gun. One or, one or it's just an alternative one. mount for the existing one or even the bad machine gun because they can take them out. Mm. They have to be able to repair them and stuff, yeah? You can Naturally, move it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so how comes this ended up in Because service? it's about training schools. Oh, how it ends up in active service in 1939, because it got to war too early. Oh, oops. They're not, they're not, their armaments industry isn't running on the, on the Fuhrer timetable. Oh. Like the Navy. The Navy's got a plan to have an amazing Navy by something like 1947. 
However, however, <laughs> we still haven't finished building our first proper battleship. We built two battle cruisers, mm. you know, and and the tanks are in the same position. They're thinking about Panther before they go to war. Oh wow! But just that but takes if time. they're nowhere near it building, all takes time. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they, they're not. They have an idea what it will look like. Same with Tiger, is their heavy tank model. Yeah, they just need to go through all. But of these but steps they need to go through these steps to get there. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. And so they do end up going to war with Panzer II. So you see wow. loads of these early ones. There's quite a lot of Panzer ones. I mean, you think out of the Blitzkrieg, you tend to be thinking about that. Like, these Panzer threes crashing down. I mean, a lot of it is this, mm. and this is even like the half decent stuff. Wow. Like, several of the check light tanks and so forth. But why is it in 1945? It's just what they've got left, right? Because Go they're in the training schools. Yeah. Because they're in the training here's schools. Here's how you move a tank. Yeah. Um, so what you what you found, you will have found has been has been happening repeatedly as the war gets more and more desperate. Maybe the training schools of 1942 did have modern equipment in them. Mm. And as things get worse and worse, they get less and less of the new stuff. And occasionally people go around saying, all right, we're going to take all the Panthers out of the training schools yeah, we need these for this flight. operation. Yeah, and it. then when we start building a new batch, you might get one. But nobody's taking these. <laughs> so they're still so they're there. Not, they're still not fit for and purpose. And they're used for policing and, uh, uh, and other things. Like that. So they are still around in the German armed forces, but they're not it's in the not Panzer as, divisions. Yeah, they're not front line. Stuff. Yeah. Um, now, gaming is different to history. Oh, massively. Gamers love a low point vehicle yeah. <laughs> with a gun on it, a right? cannon to shoot infantry. Yeah. Go on then. So the stats that we've been talking about with the same basic stats, it's confident, it's green, it's aggressive, it could benefit from that old hand rule. But this Would is probably you want not... the old hand running around with these guys? No. I mean... And actually, yeah, they do have the Stormtrooper rule. Uh, so you might want to use the Blitz rule. Does that mean they just miss everything they shoot? The Stormtrooper rule. Oh. <laughs> no, the Stormtrooper rule is what allows them to take two movement orders. If they oh, pass the first, yes. almost all if the German units have that. Yeah, yeah. But obviously you need high skill levels to be Which able to pull that off. Do not have. They don't, but if they have the old hand, uh, I don't know whether that helps them actually. But of three of these, and interestingly you only get these as a platoon of three, not right. two, three, There's four. There's no other option. Two points. Two points?! Two points. PZ2 for the win. <laughs> As did two. Now, it has a front armour of three. That's fine. Just uh, means you're wasting that massive room. shell on my exactly. silly little tank. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and the two centimetre gun has got an anti-tank rating of five. That's more and than a fire enough. power of five up. Um, so it actually struggled to knock itself out. <laughs> 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 and comparable vehicle because you get a dice on top of that three yeah. in fact over 16 centimeter and it only shoots 20 inches as well and over 16 you get another minus one don't you so yeah this, my, I, this is my army <laughs> well you can only have one one unit of three I will find a way um, I will find a way to have more so in terms of this yeah you can have one unit of one those one bunch of three one unit of those yeah but they are embedded so, you know, sometimes you have, kind of have formations, where, especially when you have expensive units. Yes. Where your force morale is actually quite fragile. Very fragile. a small number of units. This is a two-point unit you can hide somewhere. That Just have, never... a, have Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Uh, but you can race it across an open space, heading for an objective. Why? Because every shot fired at one of these wasn't fired at something real. Which is such a shame, because it's so new. It's I mean, a lot of armoured cars are more expensive than that. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's a beautiful thing. It's, yeah, yeah, because the training levels are terrible. Yes. And it still, it still has no armour. Um, but obviously the good thing about this as well is it says a lot of things about Battlefront, I think, as a company. I think if you asked them five years ago if they were ever going to make a plastic Panzer II, there's no way. Why would we do that? <laughs> why, would, why would we do that? You know, we're, uh, we're, we're, when this... What's good about this is it, it isn't the L. It's not the looks. It's not the like really late war Panzer mm. II, um, of which they built very small numbers. Actually, this is an this will do you for earlier mid war. Oh, cool! You know, and yeah. I think that this is that, that's kind of why they're bringing it out at this point as well. It fits in with the theme of this box and this release because it's all the stuff. But it's but... also for mid war players. You, you want a Panzer twos because some of those mid war German tanks are quite expensive. Yes, you don't yeah. get many of them no. for your points, especially if you want to take ones with seventy five mil guns. So having some cheaper up these are for for mid war are going to be great, and for early war as well when yeah. they finally get to it. Yeah. Um, but it just shows you how 
how broad the range is going to get over time. And you've also got two upper holes Yeah, I'm here. curious as to that. Uh, is it just like they, they look the same for all intents and purposes? Well, again, I suspect it's future proof, and I think one is going to be uh, of an earlier I'd design. Tell them why. They are the quite different. The here. The one's flat. It's got a flat edge there. That one's got an angled. Yeah. What's yeah. that all about? I don't know anything Absolutely. about Absolutely. And to your Panzer, well, it goes up to model at least L. <laughs> oh, <laughs> to give so you a, there's, quite a few there's quite a few variants. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, at this point in the war, they're, they'd all end up with the same stats. Yeah, yeah. But, sure. uh, but earlier, those differences are likely to matter. You know, whether it's got 15 or 20 millimetres of armour is a bit moot when everybody's got a 75 mil gun. <laughs> um, it's all still really no real armour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, true. Um, so those are the vehicles. I so said before, vehicles. we're going to do a separate video. We're going to have a build of these and have a look. It's worth pointing out at this stage... The design as well, because they're... Have you, can you find the... This is, yeah, one of the newer kits. What are we looking for? The other uh, Vespa. That screw. is down there. Is that, that this? Yeah. So they've done similar. If you've seen the way they did the Tiger, they've they kind of saved money on design. So there's, there's pieces that are common. Yes. And, and then it there's, says it on there. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Says common. So the actual ta the, the the tiger, I suspect, on the drawings is the same. There's elements that are common. Then there's a side that says early, and there's a side that says late, depending on which version of tiger you get. Um, and this is this is similar. So the Panzer II, you've got the common bits in the middle, this bit on the side. It, so this one is for your Panzer twos, whereas this one is for your Marder and Vespa. And again, it's, it's just clever design. That is really clever. It's, it's I wonder good if there's engineering, just a yes. little gate that they like. Right, we're gonna we're gonna splooge into this. I think they're just saved on design just rust and just gonna put and machine the, programming. You know, put the gate there. Just put a little, you know, bit of card in there. Yeah. And it just squares it into this bit. There we go. Jobs are good. Oh, right. It's and just then, a gun. And then, and then just like, puts when you want to build this one, you, you take it out and put it in there, you see? I think they're going to be different molds. <laughs> yeah. But, I don't know. They're but, the, but the, you know, the machines that cut the molds are programmed and all that kind of thing, yeah. the design work, they're not duplicating it. But that also means, like, later on, they could potentially make an L by having another... I guess. Another upgrade, so you know, other variants and stuff. I think for. they should definitely uh, ship us out there so we can see where it's manufactured. So in Kuala Lumpur, in Malaysia, is where yeah. it's manufactured. Let's go. We like a holiday in Malaysia, courtesy of oh, Battlefront. That's, <laughs> that's absolutely true. I think that's reasonable. I don't think, I don't uh, think it's reasonable. Yeah. yeah. Right, that's all, all right. of the he he vehicles. That's all the vehicles. Uh, but there's more. There's more. more. There is we more. have a bag of bases. Aren't you lucky? That's four. Infantry. Infantry. Stat, yeah, they're the standard bases that you've seen them before. Yep. Uh, four hole, five hole? Four hole bases right. and two and three hole for your bazooka and your what's it Boom. team. Wonderful. Um, we do have another unit. Yes, which is the... Um, the Infantry. Infantry Panzer Grenadier. Panzer Grenadier platoon. So uh, I've built so many of these. I've got winter ones. I've got summer ones. <laughs> Yeah, it's a beautiful sprue, this. Hard plastic. Hard Boring. plastic. 24 figures on this sprue. <clears throat> They're all different. Uh, completely. Yeah, there's no... Is there any... The, there's, there's, sim, there's some that are quite similar. I mean, there's only so many ways you can hold a rifle, right? Yeah, it's there's similar, similar style. Similar. There's different weapons yeah. options here. Absolutely. Um, and you've got, you got your That's Panzer clever. Faust on here as well, which is nice. Some quite you know, distinct, the iconic... The, pit, the guy always, with the, always say the that, guy with the pistol, and then tater masher. the guy with a tater masher with Blech. a rifle slung, absolutely. Uh, some guys with a bit of scrim and Normandy hedge in his helmet. As they even have uh, two letter codes above the heads of the guys to tell you what each of the figures MG, is. MG, MG. Yeah, so it tells PF, you that that's Panzer a Panzer Faust. Faust. MG is for the <gasps> machine gun. What's a PK? O is for officer. PK is Panzernacker. Where's that? Panzernacker? Is it, um, uh, well, let me check. It's... I'm saying that. Yes, it is. It is Panzernacker. So Panzernacker are kind of an, an, an uh, improvised anti-tank like solution. It's a grenade with the grenades. No, it's a it's an anti-tank grenade, stick grenade with six other grenades like lashed. It is a to grenade it. with grenades. It is it is six or seven grenades oh, lashed together. 
before. And it's called the Panzernacker. I love me a Panzernacker in the morning. Yeah. Uh, now, I've not seen any specific rules for Panzernacker. And it tends to be more like sappers and people like that that, yeah. that have yeah. them. But it, it was, you know, there was there is a manual that tells you how to do it or a oh, pamphlet mate, or whatever. Panzernacker manual. You just, <laughs> you just want the word, to use the word knacker, <laughs> but, don't you? Yeah. This is 2013. Yeah. Yeah. Um... So, uh, the, the, the spoken to us before, uh, uh, we talked to them before about this, but we hope to see more of this. I think... Or plastic I, infantry. I think it's the best. I, lo yeah, I, lo I love yeah. their tanks and I think they're amazing as well. I think they're the best. But their hard plastic infantry is just... Some of the best. Some of the best, the, yeah. yeah. Industry. Um, cutting, it, cutting it out is, is pretty easy in terms of making this. Now, it is hard plastic. They are small bits. You probably are, like the like the bipod on this MG42. Mm. Sometimes some of these bits are going to snap. Yeah, I think that's, um, that's a given. But you are only going to make six bases of infantry in two stands. So you've got about, about 15 guys left over oh, really? when you do this. Yeah, yeah. You got a lot. You got a lot of. Um, well, there's 24 on a sprue. You're gonna make six bases of four, one three and one five. So actually, you're gonna have 19 guys left over. Sweet. You have a lot of figures Get left over. some bases. Yeah. Make some more dudes. So the uh, Pan's going to be a training platoon. So if you take the seven stands with Panzerfaust, is eight points, and what that is is seven four-man teams and the three-man command team. Is your, is your eight points. Yeah. Uh, and you can add a Panzerschreck team, which they've done for another point. So the stats, though, they've got the problem that the rest of this force has got. is Which is? Your green and your skill level. Oh, they're still? Really? Confident motivation and you're aggressive, so you hit on fives. And hitting, uh, hit on threes. For infantry, that's a huge deal. Hit on threes. You said three is only one worse than four. So yeah, but a lot of the time, mm. you dig your infantry in and leave it on an objective. So that's, what, five? That goes up to five rather that's than six. Still, yeah, You're yeah. taking twice the number of hits. Five and is, that's, five that's is literally double point, what right? six that is. is. your anchor point, is your infantry. Yes. yes. Um, so... Do I? So I'm not saying I wouldn't take it. I'd be tempted to take it, but the skill levels and the motivation are not great either. So they're not that great in combat. Yeah. You know, you can't just throw them at the other guy and hope for the best. But you, but they are cheap. Cheap as chips. They are cheap. Um, I didn't check the Panzerfaust. Do they only get the one shot with it? Panzerfaust. It's got limited two. Limited two. So you can fire so you can two get, teams. You can get two shots. Can fire two teams. A lot of the late war Germans do, just to represent the proliferation of them. Um, there is the option on this card for you to take them in, in uh, uh, two five ones. They didn't, that might seem like a bit plush for a training battalion, but they had to train the Panzer Grenadiers as well, and they had to train them in vehicles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the vehicles that they were going to use and fight from. Uh, so, yeah, the, the I like I like the idea of cheap tanks. I don't like the idea of cheap infantry, but that would make it a tougher game for me, I think. It's very thematic. Absolutely. It's got the card, so yeah, doing the Berlin. Um, a few more, last few bits in the back. Yeah, there are a few little bits. You get your, your tank commanders and crew. Um, you get three of those. So that's what, 15? Vehicles. Yeah, five, five on each of those. You also get some of the sidecast uh, crew members for the open top ones, the Marder, I guess. Uh, was well, you don't mean the Vespa. The Vespa, the Vespa. sorry. The Vespa. Yeah, those open-backed ones. Yeah, the self-propelled artillery, the little sidecast guys. Uh, and you also get a Panzer Shrek. Oh, so you yeah, do the, get the, a Panzer Shrek, but it was in a separate baggie. So as, as well as these, probably a lot of people know that he's... But they do make a handful of little uh, hard plastic sprues as well. That's so cool. there's a Russian artillery. So this is a command sprue that they make. So it's got your Panzer Shrek on mm. it. Um, it's got a couple of NCOs. I think, is there a radio man? No. Got Hans um, Lander on there, though. And it's got this awesome, like, the Nazi villain in yeah, all of yeah. the movies. The leather big, trench coat. The, yeah, black. big leather coat. Yeah, yeah for you, the voice over. Completely. Yeah, absolutely. Probably like dabs his mouth with a handkerchief. Yeah, what, <laughs> you know, gets uh, shouts down the phone, get me the Fuhrer! <laughs> it's a, a comedy Nazi. This is That's the guy. The one. That is the guy. Um, uh, and then that's it. 
And that is all of the bits in the box. The end. Um, I can tell you that this makes exactly 100 points well, there you go. if you follow this. If you follow the, the build, the build instructions. Um, for a little list, I, I love this. So in some of the boxes, the kind of the dip, the difference between 43 and 44 in terms of the units, you get a couple of new units. Yeah. But what you what I've not had for a gem force, that I suppose the SS were a bit like that, is a radically different set of stats. That means the army is gonna the, it plays the different. figures you have it plays different. Yeah. Completely. Now the all, all the cards in this box deal with the Panzer Training Company. Yes. But in the support diagram, not everybody is from a support training company. And you actually start ending up with the options. So these are the armies where you're going to have your Volksturm and your and your Hitler Youth, uh, but also oh, yeah. Falschmjäger or SS, and you can mix all of these things together. It's what makes this period it's literally so, everything. So right? people who want like a, a different unit and in a different color, oh. every, every one of the boards, like this is the period. What kind of army? Um, because you know every street and every block is being formed, defended by a different platoon. Yeah, pretty good. Um, yeah, and the the casualties in the Battle for Berlin, they're they're enormous. But and so you're gonna find one of everything fighting as they've entered the <sighs> depots. I think they've done a good job on that. It yes, isn't certainly represented. Overwhelmed by any one vehicle either. No, well, it's it's three of it's so, like a weird Noah's Ark of to a guy with tanks. yeah, which I feel is really thematic. But I also feel to someone who's already got a collection of late war Germans. Like yeah, this is gonna complement and develop quite well what you've already got. Cool. Yeah, that's good. I think that I think that's gonna work very well. Um, and some really interesting options there. So I hope you have found this useful. I I think it's a cracking set, John. They what always you are. They, you get a lot of plastic are. in your box. We didn't actually count the numbers. There's 17 vehicles and eight infantry teams. So nice of them to do that. They've obviously been watching the videos and know that you like to try and count them. Absolutely, absolutely. Because uh, I think when they're like when they're nearer to 15, it doesn't feel such good value. Right. Yeah. 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 There you go. All right. Hope you found that useful. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Hello. If you're enjoying our Flames of War content and considering getting one of the starter sets or starter armies, why don't you think about buying one from our online web store at modelingforadvantage.co.uk. Thank you. Thank you.